it. <laughs> All right, everyone. So uh, tonight we are going to talk about lead generation. Okay, very, very important, um, especially in an hour and a time when I hear the most cries about everybody not getting much business right now. So I'm just going to go over as many of these as I can. I have more than one article to go over with. I even have a little worksheet if you guys want I can share with you after I'll show you just to help keep you mindful of where your leads and prospects can be because every day during our daily tasks and during our daily things, we should constantly be looking for those leads and prospects. So I talk a lot about giving your business card out 10 times a day, right? You hear that over and over again for me, it works. I've handed mine out not 10 times today, but when you make that your goal, I know I've handed out three business cards today, right? Two of them while I was doing showings uh, in a building for somebody else. So always, always keep on doing that and keep on growing your center of influence, growing where you can pull your leads and prospects from, right? So I was looking online to see what can we do? What can we do? What's different about 2023 with our market, with um, the way everything's online on, you know, social media and everything. And let's sort of give my old list a little revamp. So it, there's some that I've probably covered before when I've done the lead generation subject, but um, there's also some new ones in here I haven't thought of or not necessarily have tried either. So we'll go over them together and maybe we can commiserate and see if you guys have tried these or if any of these are working for you, right? So um, lead gens, one of the things, and I like this article a lot because it was sort of going over the cost and the time it would take to generate those leads and what your skill level needed to be in order to um, sort of, get, you know, take that to another level. I know a lot of people are afraid to go on social media and use it that way because they might not be artistically skilled where they're like can create the slides or they might not be technically skilled where they know how to go on there and put their, their ads in um, for paid ads and stuff like that. So this is good that it tells you whether or not you need to be, you know, experienced or, or sort of new. Um, so this one says, use a custom friends list on Facebook and engage with former clients and prospects every morning. So I think every single one of us has our page on Facebook, right? We're all using it. We usually post, you know, I don't know, updated market stats, or if we get a new listing, we throw it up there. Or if, you know, it's a holiday, we might wish our clients happy. And it sort of goes... Um, maybe unnoticed for the most part because we're quite saturated with online stuff right now, um, but it doesn't necessarily show up in your clients' feeds every morning, right? Just because they're on the page, you know, you know how it is on Facebook. Just because you have 200 friends, you don't see all 200 friends in your feed every day. You have to, you know, whatever algorithm they use there on Facebook um, doesn't necessarily make it pop up. But in this little blurb here, they're saying that the odds of somebody seeing your direct message, though, is 100%. Why? Because they get that notification every single time you send a message. So I thought it was pretty interesting. I'm actually going to try this this week myself and see how it goes and gather up all my, my past clients, you know, or anybody who I think, you know, might benefit from real estate and, you know, sort of put together a little friends list and maybe shoot them a little message, you know, every now and then. So here it says, this is why custom friends list you engage with every morning can be a powerful and free generation tool, right? You're just creating a custom friends list of your past clients, future prospects, people you're working with, anybody who's on your Facebook there and monitor it. And people might start chatting back with you, might start asking you questions, which is good because then all the other people are seeing that chat happen. And they're just reminded on a daily basis that you're in real estate, you're doing, you're doing real estate and hopefully you can pick up more clients. Right. The next one they suggested was learn how to prospect on LinkedIn. Anybody tried prospecting on LinkedIn? Anybody online there who's active in their LinkedIn profile? So, I mean, I find it's a, a decent um, tool to, to, I guess, commiserate with different people in the industry. It's definitely more professional. It's not so much on a fun level. Um, so, I mean, here in the blurb, I had to laugh. It said, you know, why, why prospect for leads on Facebook or Instagram where you have to compete with cute kitten videos? Instead, use the platform that was specifically designed for professional networking. So everybody knows that this app is geared for professional networking. You don't see all those kitten videos or get interrupted by sort of the mess of social media as much. Um, it, there is a cost to it though. So they're saying cost of LinkedIn premium is $29.99 per month. I mean, really not so much when you consider the cost of business. If you get a deal, even one deal out of it, that would pay for your whole year um, trying out LinkedIn premium. 
Um, it says there's three key ways to generate your leads on LinkedIn, building your account, creating compelling content, and identifying individuals and companies who are planning to move into your farm area. To get the details as prospecting on LinkedIn, you can check out, there's a strategy club below that we could click on, but we can go in and we can figure that out. But there it touches on your farm area too. I hope by now, aside from growing your center, influence and growing your network every day, I keep on hounding guys every time I do a video on where to get our leads and prospects or where to find our business from. Um, I want you guys to pick that farm area. It's so important. So like I say, all day, every day, you'll take a listing or you'll take a buyer client from anywhere that you're willing to drive, you know, whether it be, you know, in Toronto or around the office or, you know, Northern Ontario, wherever you're willing to go to chase that business. But when you actually actively want to go and find business, when you're not busy and you don't have people calling you to say, hey, come sell my cottage in Fourth Lakes, when you want to go find business, where's your farm area? Okay, it has to be somewhere that's convenient for you that you want to go to on a daily basis. You have to get really familiar with that farm area. And that's what you want to be focusing all of your lead gen efforts on. That's where you want to uh, pull your business from. So even when it refers to things like social media or using your LinkedIn here, it's Again, talking about your farm area, you're still going to focus all of that towards your farm area. So please, 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 everybody think of that, you know, 500, 600 home area that you want to just make it your area, your name, that you everybody knows that you're an agent in that area, right? That's where you're going to pull most of your business from. Sign up for the right lead generation service. So I kind of laugh at this one because, you know, being an agent myself for 17 years now, we have all tried lead generation tech, uh, techniques and services. Most of the time, the leads are total, you know, garbage. If you guys find a good one, I mean, feel free and share it with the rest of the office because I find that this is the biggest complaint. People will say, I signed up for the service. I used a lot of money and my prospecting wrong. I'm making the calls wrong. So there's been a few times where I've actually tried making those phone calls for the agents and a lot of the, a lot of the leads are kind of garbage. So it, I mean, sure, if you found the right quote unquote lead generation service, it would be fantastic. Um, it's saying here, agents love to complain about them, but when it gets comes to getting prospects fast, lead generation services are in a class of their own. An, astonish, an astonishing 48.1% of all real estate website traffic is on Zillow, and more than 28% of Zillow's traffic comes from search engines like Google. So um, I don't know. We can try. I, I, I'm kind of uh, jaded with the lead gen, but we'll see if anybody finds a good one, let me know. Drive more engagement with Instagram stories and reels. So we find Instagram, TikTok's another big one. A lot of agents are using TikTok. Um, they're using these as a sort of a different way to market. They're putting up, you know, videos with some um, information in them, something useful that clients can use. Um, so it says here, want leads from Instagram, focusing on the engagement you generate from short form um, video is the best way to get them. Here's why. Instagram's alg algorithm has always rewarded posts that amasses likes and comments. The more likes and comments your post gets, the more people Instagram shows it to. So that's the algorithm right there is the more you're getting liked, the more you're getting shared, the more you're getting, sh uh, you know, showing up in people's feeds um, automatically. But since social media apps like TikTok have become more popular, Instagram's algorithm is now rewarding engagement on video features like reels and stories much more than in static posts. So they're saying, I guess, that you have more of a chance of being seen on Instagram in this case because instead of just putting up a flat picture, they're encouraging you to put up that reel or that short video like TikTok. I see a lot of agents doing it and a lot of agents are getting a lot of views, you know. I need to find them more time. I've tried to put up a few TikToks of my own, but it's a great idea. If you're already walking through uh, a house to do a showing, there's it doesn't take you much longer to pull out your phone and take a short video of yourself while you're walking through that home, right? So um, try it. Try it while you're with your clients and do it. Make it something fun. Or if you're just closing a home, maybe do a cute congratulations video with your clients, you know, beside the, the sold sign or something along those lines, something that you think will draw you some attention. Or I've also seen people just chatting in their car daily driving to work and they just say something about maybe the 
that's pertinent to the industry or something that's informative. Um, so people sort of tune in on that because they want to hear, you know, how, you know, how, here's how you can save faster to buy a home or wondering what's happening with the rates in the real estate market. So um, I'm a big TikTok, in Instagram user. I love watching it. And I, I follow a lot of agents out there just to see what they're doing. So try it out. Offer your real estate expertise to local communities on Reddit, Facebook, and Nextdoor. So offering your real estate expertise to local groups on social media sites like Reddit, Facebook, and Nextdoor is an excellent way to generate free leads and become a valued member of your local community while you're at it. Join local groups and start engaging with your neighbors on topics that are important to them. When members of the group have real estate questions, trust me, they have a ton of questions. They all, every function, anywhere you ever go, always there's a real estate topic going on. It's a topic that's most comes up at weddings and anywhere you are. So you can offer your honest opinion without trying to sell them a thing. Eventually they will come to you for advice and you will get clients. Um, so all of us have used this strategy, you know what I mean? And you don't seem pushy that way when you're giving someone advice rather than trying to chase people down. Are you selling? Are you selling? Are you buying? Right? Three times your lead generation with a smart CRM. So this says cost is $25 per month. We are very lucky to have KV4 now. I promise you all, there was some big hiccups, you know, getting it put into our office. And that it wasn't just our office. It was, I was talking to head office. So many offices had that. It was just because it was such a big move for all of us to load it onto our system. We have access to it. I had actually looked into KV Core before it became part of our Remax.net. Um, as a system to use as a CRM. I live and die by my CRM. I cannot do business without it, right? So um, you really need to try and learn it. Uh, I'm going to be doing a course on it. I, I'll be doing a training session on it once I feel confident enough to teach the rest of you because it's new to all of us. Um, so this one is suggesting Zerpal. I don't even think you should listen to any of that because we have such a good CRM built into our back office. But if you have time, go and familiarize yourself with it. At least import your contacts into it. If any of you were using Lead Street before, all our contacts got loaded automatically in, which was like a lifesaver. I was kind of fretting that it wouldn't be because like I say, I live and die by my CRM. So my CRM had hundreds and hundreds of contacts in it. Um, but definitely if you don't have that or you don't know how to do that in the next you know, week or two until I get confident enough to teach you guys on it, make a list. Now, if this is saying Excel is like the worst, but like I honestly Excel or just Google Sheets. If you go on there, you create a list and we'll I'll help you import it. Because I know you can do a, a comma separated value sort of do, a document there and we can pull it into your KV core. Um, just do, you know, first name, last name, number, email, and get me all your contacts in there. Start creating that center of influence document. Um, and then we'll figure out how to put it into your KV core for you. And then you guys can start using your CRM. But you're just never, ever going to remember you know, whoever tells you they want to buy a cottage three months from now, you're never going to remember to buy them, you know, call them three months from now to help them purchase that. Unless you put it in your CRM, you have, it has to be a tool that you're using every day and you're logging in every day too. Um, so definitely, definitely start getting that ready and we'll, we'll get you guys started with that. Scale up Facebook and Instagram ads. So, you know, we can boost our ads there. While building your Instagram following and increasing engagement will eventually get you leads, buying ads on the platform will get you leads faster. After all, paid advertising is the main way Facebook and Instagram make money. So if you want to get the best leads from their platform without the grind, buying ad is the way to do it. So they really, really do work. I mean, it is a budget. You kind of have to keep on top of it. But I mean, they have a really good tool there. You can really hone in on the area that you want to boost your ad for. So if you have that listing, you know, maybe you want to spend $5 a day or, you know, you can set your budget, you know, $20 a week or something along those lines and try and hit that area. All it means is people who are scrolling their Facebook in that area, it'll come up more depending on where you decided to, if you want it to come up on their side or if you want it to come up in the main feed while they're scrolling their Facebook. Um, and it all depends on, you know, your budget, how much you want to put towards it. Right. Um, it says here the key to success in getting high quality leads from your Facebook ads is to design irresistible lead magnets to convince people to stop scrolling cute cat pictures and click on your ad. So think of something catchy. Don't do your regular buying or selling or, you know, uh, want a free market evaluation. Try to think out of the box. 
try to play around. I think that you guys all should be giving some kind of logo, um, something catchy, you know, something different, maybe a little slogan um, or offer something of value. You know, they say when you do an ad, you have to have a call to action, right? So if you're offering something of, of value, you say, call me today or call today or, you know, click on this button and fill out whatever. You have to have that call to action. Otherwise, they'll just scroll your ad and read it and go, great, okay, and pass right by it. There has to be some sort of call to action there. Build or buy an IDX lead generation website. So I'm guilty. I don't have a website right now. We do all have our Remax, which is, you know, IDX. It does have the IDX and the DDF feed on it. You will get leads. I hope you guys are all have your um, Remax.net set up and your profile set up because you do get leads from there. Um, if you don't and you want help getting in, let me know. Um, they come to your phone, you know, pretty often, like once a month, twice a month. And if like you think that's not that often, I mean, like one deal a month, if you're focusing on that's pretty good. That's 12 deals for the year. So and they are decent leads. They're not like those lead gen co companies that I was talking about that are pretty worthless, I find. Um, they actually are qualified people who want to view things and like want to buy or want to list. So you can get anything from like a little lease listing to, you know, a $2 million property. So um, make sure you're signed up in the back there. But this is suggesting that, you know, even if you want to on the side, build an IDX lead generation website. So building your website there, there's going to be an IDX feed, you know, you're probably going to scroll leads off a of Treb. Maybe you have some sort of online capture there too, like click here and fill out this form for more information or for a free evaluation of your home or whatever. And then you're capturing that information of whoever's um, looking at your website, right? Write blog posts for micro niche local topics. So this, you know, it, it makes sense. Like I say, there's a lot of people out there that are just offering regular everyday advice that you see over and over again. So it says here, while getting your articles to rank on Google for local real estate searches, it's virtually impossible these days. You should try and rank for micro niche local topics that the big sites are ignoring. You can write about topics like local zoning changes, new construction, or guides to small subdivisions or neighborhoods that buyers might want to reach. You might only get a trickle of traffic to these blog posts, but many of them will be buyers researching their next move. So the trickle of traffic, sometimes you want to focus on the smaller pot, right? And you don't want to try to just, that's why we all say pick a farm area, pick a farm area. It works better than just trying to advertise and sending out 50,000 flyers once to the whole, you know, a whole big section of Scarborough. You might want to just take that 500 and you can send it out, you know, 10, 15, 20 times over the course of the year and have that one little pocket know you better. So if you focus on a micro niche topic and you start a blog post, maybe you can write about something like, you know, I know a lot of people in my area that have that military trail that's been under construction. You know, just being a real estate agent, you know, innately, my neighbors think I know the answer to everything. They go, hey, you know, when's that construction finishing on military trail? Do you know? You know, and I'm like, you know, I don't know. I, you know, we want to find out. So because I'm getting asked it so much, we looked it up, you know, it's ending, you know, supposed to be summer 2023. Um, maybe you want to write something that might be something of interest, uh, interesting topic um, for people in your area, in your immediate area, in your farm area. Find out something that you want that is pertinent to them or, you know, um, uh, I guess an exciting topic for them, something informative for them. Use predictive analytics to get leads from your local uh, from to, and farm your local area. So predictive analy analytics deserves a place in your 2023 lead generation plan. It's the first truly disruptive technology for real estate in years. Here's how it works. Using advanced artificial intelligence, predictive analytic apps sort through reams of data to deliver buyer leads and seller leads before they're ready to buy or sell a home. So uh, again, you know, I had to look up here. I put a little blurb in myself just to read a little further about this. I think you'd need the help of like a company or somebody who's used to um, uh, helping with this sort of thing, you know, kind of like someone who, who would do SEO marketing and predictive analytics, you know, when they're putting that into your, you know, bringing up your name on Google searches and stuff like that. Um, but basically, it's the use of data to predict future trends and events. It uses historical data to forecast potential scenarios that can help drive strategic decisions. So that one is a little beyond my beyond my, I guess, um, ability to help you guys with. I think you'd have to go to an outside source to sort of help you with that. But it's definitely something we, like I say, most of these I tried to focus on what is pertinent in 2023 now because 
I want to know what's actually going to help us all this year. And we're all trying to find that business, right? So use deep insights from Zillow to convert more leads. So anybody go on Zillow a lot? I know I'm on House Sigma a lot. Um, I, don't, I don't go on Zillow too much, but it says there that the statistic is after a buyer agent, a buyer contacts an agent, they'll go back to Zillow 27 times and look at 77 more posts in 30 days, right? So that means that even if you answered your phone right away, you wowed them, you're really good, you're really receptive, you're, you know, you're on, you're on the ball, there's still a huge chance they'll end up working with someone else. Now, why is that? Because when they're click, click, clicking online, most of the time, that 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 agent's information is on that in um listing. So even though you may be the first person they contacted, they may be contacting, you know, 10 tens and 20, like, you know, uh, 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 many, many other agents uh, after they talk to you, right? So um, they say here that when you go on to Zillow and you become a premier agent, which is apparently free, I believe this one was free. Yeah, it says free. Um, and then um, it means that after they contact you, after they click on that link, any other ones they look at in Zillow, your information is the only one that comes up and not that agent, right? So definitely something to check out. Um, so we're going to see broadcast a circle prospect just sold and open houses. This is $2.99 per month or 10 cents per voicemail. So this is one of those dialing systems. So I don't know, I've never used them before. I find, you know, I usually hand out flyers in the neighborhood, but it's kind of just saying, you know, it's helping you boost the people around where you have a listing. So if you have a listing, there's different things I talk about doing. We do our just sold, we do our just listed flyers for the neighborhood. This is talking about a dialing system where it's going to automatically dial. So what happens is you create a voicemail and you, you know, make that, I don't know, 30, 45 second voicemail. And it takes that voicemail and it'll automatically dial and give that voicemail to, you know, the 300 neighbors in the neighborhood. You know, you can take, you can plug in all their phone numbers in one of these dialing systems. So Good way to get out there. I mean, I'm sure you guys have answered the phone before and you've had that pre-recorded message. That's what these people are using is they're using these kind of dialing systems, right? So prospect old expired rather than new ones. So when you go to, if you're um, familiar with going to chase terminated and expired listings, um, I often joke, if you guys have heard my training before, when I've covered going after expired listings, when you go to knock on the door close to that expired time, so, you know, a day or two after expired, there's a couple of things that happen. First of all, um, it's already listed with somebody else and you're like, what? It's only, it just expired yesterday. That's because most of these people are chasing them a couple of days before they expire. Okay. Um, the other thing is people are really annoyed because a lot of agents are coming to their door. Um, I actually went because I love chasing expired and terminated because those are like those are like good door knocking. They're warm door knocking, not cold door knocking. So um, when I go and I chase them, I went to one once and there was a sign in the door and it says, if you're an agent, please don't knock on the door. Because I guess there had been so many agents that came and knocked on the door because that listing was close to expiring that they just didn't want anybody knocking on the door anymore. So <laughs> old expires, if you go back, okay, it'll be a couple of things. First of all, um, if you go back to uh, somebody who was trying to sell a year ago, a year and a half ago, this article is saying, oh, the, there might be a more realistic price because everything was, you know, so high, you know, and now, you know, um, everything is low. I don't think that's a really good strategy right now because everything's lower. But if you go back, people might have had the time to breathe a little. They might have had the time to think through a little bit. They're not as harassed by the market. They don't have agents banging down their door and calling them like mad because their their listing has expired. So sometimes they're a little more receptive to your call or you trying to prospect them. Or maybe they're just ready to give it another try and say, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe I will put the house back on the market. So try to narrow your search down and you can look for ones that just expired. They're hot if you're able to get in you know they're ready to sell right now. But you can also try and take your search and look at what in your, and I'm talking about your farm area, I should only be looking in your farm area, right? Um, things that are about a year old, a year old expired and see if they still want to go and do that. Do you guys all know online here how to look at expired or terminated listings? Maybe I should log in quick and just show you really quickly while I'm on here. Cause I know when I'm training uh, a lot of people, uh, um, 
just don't know how to look for them. So it's not really, <laughs> it's not really pertinent to them. They're like, oh, I don't know how to look for those. So let me log in real quick and just give you guys a quick, quick lesson on how to look for that terminated or expired. I'm going to stop the share and come back in so that uh, you guys can see. Okay. So you're going to go and you're going to click on search. I highlight my mouse here. Okay. And you're going to want unavailable, not available, and continue. Okay. And again, we'll do around the office because whenever I'm training, at least that gives you guys an idea of what area I'm in because everybody knows where the office is, right? And I'm going to go and I'm going to say that the last status update, uh, where am I here? Totally lost on the screen. Um, the last status, okay, is going to be expired, EXP, or terminated. I'm going to hold control down and click on terminated. That way it'll highlight both terminated and expired. See? Okay. So just by doing that, um, you know, the system, unless you choose archives, automatically goes back two years. So it's giving me 1,300. I know that I want to always bring this number down to 200. It's only going to display me 200 at a time. So maybe I only want to look at the detached homes. Okay. And I only want to look when the last update. So here I picked last status change. Okay. So I want to know what this last update was in the last. So we're talking about searching old ones. So let's go back a year. So let's say I want only ones from January 2022 to March 2022. We can maybe we can even do April. Let's see how many come up. Hopefully it'll be under 200. Okay. 182. So now I've brought my search down. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look and see what has terminated and what's expired. Okay. So um, why is it showing me sold? Let me see one second here. Last status change. Oh, I picked not. My apologies. <laughs> not. So I want to ex only expired and terminated. I was wondering why it brought me up sold. I'm like, it can't be sold if it's terminated or expired. Okay, so now I always go and I search by the street name because sometimes these are duplicates because we all know when we have a listing that's not pushing, that's not moving, uh, we normally kind of terminate it and we read, uh, we put it up again. So you see here like this one, Freeman, 35 Freeman's been listed three times and terminated, okay? It's a pretty hefty listing. I wonder if it actually sold. So now I'm gonna go here to a new window. You kind of have to do a little work when you're doing terminated and expired because you have to take this extra step to find out whether or not it's actually sold now. Okay. And the reason you want to do that in a small area is because you don't want to go through hundreds and hundreds of these. You want to pick a list of like 40, go through that 40 and find one or two that you can knock this week. Right. And go and try and get that listing. So you're going to go in here and you're going to go to Toronto and you're going to go 35. Freeman, and there's five there. Oh, wow. So here's a good one. We can see that 35 Freeman has been listed five times, terminated all five times, hasn't sold. So they seem to have not listed again. They've gotten frustrated, I guess, with the market because since November of 2021, they've tried to list and sell, list and sell, list and sell. I'm going to go, oh, goody, I'm going to go knock at this door now. Now, people ask me, why can't I just call them? You can call them. And this case is going to be a little bit harder because it even says Borden Birch Properties. Like, how am I going to find that? Who owns that? I guess you could go online and see. But you're not closing anything on the phone. I always tell you guys this over and over again. You are closing things in person. So your object is to, the object is to get in front of those people's face and see what is happening. Like, hey, like, Let's get this done. I want to get this sold for you. I look through all your listings. I really think you can get this price now or whatever you've analyzed about this property that you can do better, that you can get it sold, right? So that's just a quick overview there of how you're going to search expired and terminated listings. Let's go back and see what else there is in this article, though. There's like tons to go over. Um, prospect old ones. Okay. Learn open house ideas that actually get you leads. So contract Contrary to many experienced, what many experienced agents will tell you, 
open houses are still an excellent source of leads in 2023. You just need to get your game up a bit to create memorable experience for your open house. So how to get started if you're a new agent. Memorize and role play my open house scripts with a quote for worker. So what are you going to say to these people when they come in? Create Facebook event to promote your open house and boost it. You also got to make sure that you're putting it on your MLS listing. And there's another section. I don't know if you guys all know. If you have an open house, tell me. There's another section where on realtor.ca, you can go and you can plug in your open house so the public has an uh, easier time to find it, right? Um, make sure you have a good open house app to capture information or at least a sign-in sheet at the door or something like that. Um, create a helpful lead magnet, like a selection of off-market listings or an actionable guide navigating the local market to send to open house guests, right? You want to have comparables ready with you. Maybe you want to have a little giveaway and give somebody so they walk away with, you know, your little keychain or your magnet you've done for that year. Something. Bring your A-game when it comes to open houses because these people are actively looking and they're walking in and you've got them face to face. They can meet you, right? So you want to try and capture their information and let them leave with something um, that will remind them that you're an agent, right? Master the art of writing prospecting letters. So guys, send some things out. You guys, I don't want to hear, I'm not busy. I'm, 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 I'm not busy. I'm bored. I'm not doing a lot of business right now. You can't be wasting your days. Try everything. So last week, I sent out just one of these little prospecting letters because I have a lease um, in Fairfax and I um, said, hey, you know, I'm getting a lot of calls asking me if it's for sale. It's a really popular building. So I just sent out one of those. Hey, I got a lot of buyers. Call me. I've gotten two calls. No listing yet. Two calls is pretty good because, you know, they say the statistic is you have to keep on putting a flyer. Fairfax is not my my farm area. So you have to keep on putting a flyer in someone's face 10 times before they recognize your face or you get a call. I think the statistic is you get a 1% return on all of the, you know, if you do flyering. Two calls just for the one Fairfax building. So um, I suggest you guys get off, you know, um, you know, the whole, it's, you know, it's not busy. I'm so slow right now. And just do something with your time. Do up a little letter, a little prospecting letter and ship it out in your farm area and see if it, it works, right? Work your sphere of influence. Again, I say this over and over again. Um, you got to work your sphere of influence, right? Uh, you've got to keep on contacting your people in your sphere of influence. That should be your past clients you work with, your current clients you work with, your family, your friends, your everybody that you're in contact with on, on a regular basis should be in that, you know, um, sphere of influence. So they're saying, how do you work it properly? You move the contacts into a CRM. Again, live and die by my CRM. If you're not using one, you're you're losing. I can 100% guarantee you you're letting some business slip or you're losing some business somewhere. You're not grabbing everything that comes your way because the CRM just keeps, even with the CRM, I still go, oh no, you know, like this client is slipping through the cracks. So you want to break them down into groups. So how financially solvent or connected they are, how likely you think they are to transact in the next few months. That's just sorting your leads from warm, hot, cold, you know, how to work them. Um, and then set out an outreach cadence to touch base with them. So you should be reaching out with them on a regular basis. How are you doing that? Are you sending them e-blasts? Are you calling them to remind them, uh, hey, you know, I'm your agent. Remember, I sold you that house, you know, it was about five years ago. You got equity now. Let's buy another property. Are you ready to upsize? Ready to downsize? You know, keep in touch with everybody. All right, the next one, prospect uh, uh, FSBOs for sale by owners, FISBOs, whatever you want to call them. Um, like I say, go and keep track, go online, go into GG, make sure it's not an agent you're calling. Our, um, a lot of them are agents that are advertising on KGG incorrectly, I, I might add. But uh, you want to see if there's any for sale by owner signs out, take pictures of them, call them, prospect them. They're definitely a good way to get some business, right? Find a new niche niche, and work it relentlessly. If you're not getting enough high quality leads, you might be in the wrong niche or worse, not working a niche at all. Many agencies kind of fall into whatever transaction type seems easiest during their first two or three years in real estate. They never take time to find a niche market that works for them. So it says, take my real estate personality quiz. So I suggest you guys just figure out what's going on in your farm area. So if you decided to work this farm area and you're saying you're a condo expert and there's no condos in your area, it's kind of silly. So there are some guys that just get listings over and over in the same building. Why? Because that's their niche. Everybody knows that 
you know, you want the highest price or you want to sell fast. This agent sells a lot in this building. That's their niche. They're going to do it. So they'll get called 10 times before you'll get called for that building. Right. So just start working a niche. Get some fresh air, start door knocking. I love it when the nice weather comes. I door knock in the winter, but it's like from my car, if I see a bin or if I see somebody doing some major renos, I'll walk up to the door and knock, but I don't physically walk streets and knock. Um, in the summertime, I do. So I have already, you know, got some uh, my little door hangers ready. I'm going to go out there as soon as the nice weather starts and start hanging them up. I love it when the nice weather comes. Door knocking works. So any of you guys who say, oh, I don't like it, I want to get out there and talk to people in your farm, again, in your farm area. Once you do it once or twice, you'll find the neighbors get to start to know you. If you've handed out your flyers already in that area and then you've door knocked it and then you've cold called them because you got a listing in that area to tell them about your just listed you're going to find that it's not such a chore to go and door knock in your area because you're going to walk around and you're going to know who to hit. You're going to go, oh, you know, that old guy over there seems to be renovating. I wonder if he's renovating because he's getting ready to sell now. I've talked to him for a few times over the last two years. You know, you just get to know your area and you get to know how to get leads from there um, and how to get sales from there. Sorry. Pick up the phone and make outbound calls. OK, you guys cannot be shy. I know it's hard, but. It doesn't matter. It's business. You guys got to get a thick skin. You got to not care. Sometimes you do get hung up on, but it's okay. You just pick up the phone and start calling again. You know, they say, you know, you have to make a hundred phone calls before you get one lead, one appointment, one person you can sit down and talk with. So every time someone hangs up on you, you just got to say, that's okay. I'm one closer to getting that lead. Just pick up the phone and call again. No need to cry over it. They don't, you don't know them. They don't know you. It's nothing personal. They could be having a bad day. Just pick up the phone. Don't be shy. Host a first time home buyer seminar in a fun location. So it doesn't even have to be a fun location. I held a very successful first time home buyer seminar at my uh, other brokerage. Uh, and I honestly, I just need time to do it again. It was really well put together. I invited a lawyer that I knew and I invited a mortgage guy that I knew. Um, and I just went and I, I flyered a whole bunch of buildings in my area places where I thought that there would be a lot of renters. Um, and I had, a, I would have to say, I, I can show you guys pictures, maybe about 30, 35 people there. And I captured everybody's numbers and I kept in touch and I ended up getting, I think two sales out of that. Um, I almost got a third. It didn't work out, but it worked. It, anyways, it ended up working out really, really well. It's just something to give them some information. So you, you know, you, you want to have something of value for them. How, what the process is to buy a first time home, you know, how to get approved for their mortgage. That's why I had the lawyer and the mortgage agent there with me to help, you know, with that seminar. Really successful. Think about it. And like I say, this is in a fun location. Sure, you can do, you know, reserve a small area in a restaurant and serve like, you know, maybe coffee, tea or something. But I mean, I'm sure you guys can use the office as well. You know, if you market it well enough, you can just bring in some donuts and coffee here and have your first time um, buyer seminar here. I mean, I, I did it at our last brokerage and it was fine and successful. Pitch your services to small local real estate investors. So pitching your services to small local real estate investors can get you a steady source of leads who often buy homes in cash and transact multiple times a year. While high interest rates have slowed down investment activity, many cash rich investors are hunting down deals for selling properties they already own. Since so many agents are ignoring them these days, 2023 might be a good chance to build relationships with investors and let them know how you can help them when you're ready to dive back in. Not only that, a lot of investors are doing pre-con right now. Like I say, you know, they're not caring what the interest rate looks like in a few years from now. Um, they can spread their money out in a couple of different, you know, um, and not have to worry about closing them for a couple of years. So definitely, definitely reach out. Get free press by pitching local news outlets. So while testimonies on your website or landing page will help you convert leads into clients, getting your name to the press as a real estate expert is even better. Uh, you can include logos of all the news outlets you've been quoted on your website, business cards, landing pages. So it's kind of nice to like say, hey, I was on, you know, X, Y, Z. So make a list of local news outlets or blogs to pitch and find the editor's contact information. I find a lot of people even have like um, uh, community ones, you know, on uh, the radio and stuff like that. You can guys can do that if there's something in your particular community that's, you know, uh, it's even like more directed that way if you're doing it. So 
Reward your referral sources with handwritten note and gift cards. So give your referrals, treat your referrals really, really nice. I've told you guys, I don't keep any secrets to myself. I told all my family and friends know, hey, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, if you are anywhere and you see somebody who says something on your, because, you know, my feed is only so many people, but if all my friends and family know that look when they're looking on their Facebook, hey, anybody know a realtor? Or, I'm thinking of selling my house or anything like that. I think I'm looking for a handyman because I want to sell my house soon. Pimp me out online, put my name on there and I will treat you good. So usually I'll buy them like, you know, a really nice gift card for the keg to go have dinner with their spouse or something like that um, for, for putting my name up there. Right. Cause I'm, I can't be everywhere all at once and it's worked really well. Um, actually one of my good friends referred me once on Facebook. She was in one of these groups and it, it turned out to be one of my best clients. Um, you know, I sold her condo. I bought her a townhouse. I sold her townhouse. I bought her a home, you know, their parents are thinking of selling soon. Um, so it's just turned out to be really good clients. So you never know, you never know. That's somewhere I would have not gotten in contact with unless it wasn't for my friend, spewing my name on Facebook there, whatever group she was in, um, this particular person was looking. So be good to your referrals. Tell your friends, you know, hey, anybody at your work looking, just tell them, you know, to use me and I'll treat you good with, you know, a nice gift card or something like that. Um, let's see, we got eight minutes left. Drive around with gifts at the ready. So instead of using pop buys with clever cards, I always keep coffee mugs filled with candy in my car. When I was out doing showings and drove near a former client's house, I would stop by and give them one. So don't forget your former clients. Definitely try and give them treats. Everybody likes swag, right? Swag, what's that? Something we all get. So keep some swag on you. Everybody likes getting a little gift, something for free, something that's um, usable. So pitch absentee landlords and owners of distressed properties. So your local inventory is tight. Try offering absentee landlords and owners of distressed properties your services. So how do you do that? You're going to look up the property and your records, use the data from Canada Postal Service, and order an owner and encumbrances report from the title company. So you can try that. Trade your client appreciation parties for, for social happy hours. So again, you can do that instead of client appreciation, you know, you can sit there and have a happy hour with your clients. You can generate referrals from them um, and treat them that way. I'm just going to try and get through this list here because there, I know there was another one I wanted to look at there. Um, make clever pop-ups and work them into your outreach schedule. So pop pop by gifts, small gifts, agents hand out to former clients with clever note attached can work wonders to keep you top of mind and drive referrals. You guys should always be trying to give something to clients you close as well too, like, you know, a magnet for their fridge. So anybody coming to see their new home can do it. Um, I, when we were at, um, R4 in Las Vegas, I saw these gorgeous, like cutting boards that you could logo. That'd be something great that every time they pull that out to use it, your name would be on there, um, for anybody around. So it was a good idea. Drive referrals by promoting local businesses. So you can, you know, sort of commiserate with different businesses around, you can promote their services. They can promote your services, try to work hand in hand with local businesses around. And especially since COVID, there's been such a push for use your local business. Don't use the big box store, use who's local in your area. So, you know, it's kind of like a good thing to just a good camaraderie to work together with our small local businesses in the area. Build a personal brand that resonates with buyers and sellers in your farm area. So um, if you're struggling to find leads, it says start your lead journey by building a compelling personal brand. So this is something I talk to every new agent that comes in here. I That's why I say to you guys, logo, get a slogan, become a brand. So avoid changing your marketing material a lot. Now, mind you, don't be that person that has the picture from, you know, 30 years ago and now you're all gray hair, but keep your brand marketing the same. Take your picture and use it on your business card. Use the same one on your sign. Use the same one on your billboard that you post or your bus ad or your social media clip on Facebook, whatever you're doing. And the reason is, is because you're branding yourself. You're becoming a brand. So this is what this is talking about. What is the benefit? The benefit of being a brand is you're recognizable. People remember you. So during these slow times, these are the things you guys should be working on, especially because when you're busy, you never have time to do it. Now is the time you should think and say, you know, what's a neat slogan I can do? Or maybe let me get a logo designed for my brand, my for myself. Let me make sure all my my cards and my uh, my uh, for sale signs and my open house signs, they all match with the same picture because that branding is really important and you're recognizable, right? 
work with divorce, bankruptcy, and probate attorneys. Everyone laughs at this, but hey, you know, it's a it's a, a thing that happens in life. You know what I mean? People get bankrupt, people divorce. You definitely want to try and work hand in hand with these on some kind of referral um, um, basis so they can refer business to you and you can refer business to them, right? And network at more events unrelated to real estate. So yes, you can have all of the things where you say, come to my first time home buyers event, or you can go and attend, um, you know, re like kind of a Remax event, or, you know, we've got the Realtor Fest coming up, all of that stuff, but try to attend things that aren't real estate related. And like I say, real estate always comes up as a topic. So, um, you know, if you hear there's some kind of community event coming up, or I like to go to the small businesses events, you know, uh, what's it called? The Scarborough um, Society for Small Businesses. I like to go that and talk to small business owners and get to know people. Um, if there is, you know, I don't know, Glenn DeBearmaker usually tries like to have stuff and like, or if there's anything going on, anything interesting in the area that's not real estate related. I can guarantee you at some point, real estate is going to come up as a topic. You're actually going to enjoy where you're being because it's not just a real estate um, convention that you're at or something. And you'll have the chance to uh, an opportunity to hand out your business card and get to know those people as a referral. So I am impressed. I talked solid. I got through all 33. I didn't think I thought it was kind of a hefty article to go over. But hopefully I've given you guys some uh, good ideas to try and boost your business, some places to find um, some leads, some prospects to work with. Um, like I say, it doesn't matter whether you're new, old, been in the business forever. Everybody experiences the same market. It's what you do with it in the, during that market. So I know all I've been doing is spending my time figuring out where I can get leads, right? That's what I go back to the drawing board. I go back to my center of influence. I hand out flyers. I, you know, start cold calling. I might go do some door knocks, you know, and knock on wood. You know, I think it's, I think it's helping boost a little now. I think I see some things coming out of the woodwork of my last couple of weeks of effort, you know, to get that ball rolling again. So get out there and do something. You can't just sit and say you're slow without actually being active and trying something. So definitely, definitely get out there. If you guys want help, I'm always available to call. And I love talking about ideas of how I can help you guys boost your business. Like I say, nothing's a secret. It's just all out there. There's so much business out there for all of us that we can share things that work with each other and, and uh, all be safe and have business for our own. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys have a lovely week. I'm going to go over. So when we did assignment sales on Tuesday, um, I know that they were asking to go through some examples and stuff. I'm going to try and prep that for Tuesday morning training. So I think I'm going to go through some actual examples of assignment sale and filling out the sheet as we go along. So you guys understand, have a little better understanding and it's not such a daunting task. So look out for that topic next week. All right, everyone. Have a good weekend. Hopefully the good weather stays and it's not rainy. I don't know. I was going to be looked at the temperature, uh, but hopefully it's a nice relaxing weekend. <laughs> Bye guys. Talk to you soon.